Welcome to Inspiring China, I'm Greg. This is a super exciting time in our generation and one of the great topics to talk about digital banks. For the last decade, we have witnessed digital transformation sweeping across the globe, positively impacting the businesses and our lives. The growing trend of customers visiting bank branches has turned to their mobile phone instead. We are entering a new world of ubiquitous banking, which has turned boring and lengthy transactions into fun and cool experiences. Asia is a fantastic place to witness the rapid changes with the fast adoption of digital banking, in particularly China. For the last decade, China has gone through a banking cultural revolution. Thanks to the technology that was brought to the financial industry that has disrupted and changed the landscape forever. China's financial regulators include People's Bank of China, PBOC, which leads monetary policy and regulations of financial institutions. China Banking Insurance Commission, CBIRC, that supervises the banking and insurance sector. Finally, China Securities Regulatory Commission, CSRC, which oversees the securities, futures and asset management market. Like elsewhere, the financial sector in China has the strictest regulations when compared with the non-financial industries. Different type of license is required to run the respective businesses, and it is complicated. To give you some examples, the banking and insurance regulator CBIRC issue licenses for banks, trust companies, leasing firms, and insurance entities. CSRC issue licenses for brokerage, futures, and mutual fund companies. Other type of financial establishments such as microfinance and guarantee companies are covered by the local financial service bureau on the provision level. These are the traditional type of licenses or the brick and mortar companies in the financial sector. To tackle the rising demand of market needs and emergence of financial digitalization, a new class of online financial licenses has been issued by the regulator in the past decade that allow operators to run the entire business online. In 2010, a total of 27 companies were issued the third-party payment operator license, which includes Alipay, WePay, and others. By 2020, the total number has reached 242. These are the pioneers that have initiated the social behavior changes in China from a cash-based society moving towards a digital and cashless economy. Apart from payment operators, this new class of online financial licenses covers banking, insurance, securities, futures, financial leasing, mutual funds, microfinance, pawnbroker, fund sales, and the like. China has a huge population of 1.3 billion people living across the total land space of 9.7 million kilometers square. Many banks are required to support a society of different financial needs. In 2019, a total of 4,588 financial institutions serving this population with total assets of $41 trillion. These financial institutions constitute policy banks, state-owned banks, credit unions, British banks, and many other forms of banking entities. According to a 2017 Global Findex database, there are still 225 million unbanked adults in China. In addition to the national savings rate of 45%, the market potential of this country is massive. The banking regulator has subsequently decided to branch out new banking licenses that help launching new products and services to serve the unbanked, underbanked, and underserved SMEs and individuals. Since 2014, a total of 19 privately owned banking licenses were subsequently approved that accepts deposits, disbursed loans, and offer other banking services, five of which are digital banks under the online banking license which operate entirely branchless with technology. Different names have been used globally to describe this new generation of banks, internet banks, challenger banks, new banks, or virtual banks. And there are subtle differences when describing in each country. For simplicity's sake, let's call them digital banks. The total assets for the 19 new banks have reached $98 billion, where 11 of them already made profits. When looking at the lending market potential in China, you need to understand the personal lending market, that is the unregulated market below the radar screen, where lenders are families, friends, or even loan sharks. In 2020, the personal lending market is worth $1.12 trillion. According to the industry survey, 
44% of borrowers for the personal lending market is for home purchase, 35% is for commercial purpose, 19% is for car purchase or education. Separate statistics on unpaid credit cards or outstanding payments beyond six months stood at $1 trillion. The People's Bank of China credit reference database has close to 900 million registered citizens, but only 370 million has credit history. This gives you an idea of the potential market gap. When we're talking about digital banking in China, WeBank stands out. It only took five years for WeBank to reach a valuation of $23 billion, which made them the largest banking unicorn in the world. They have a banking license, just like other Main Street banks in China, which allows them to take deposits, deposits loan, and other financial services. In 2019, Moody's assigned first-time deposit rating of A3 to WeBank. WeBank is part of the Tencent Group, one of China's top four largest technology giants. Others include Alibaba, Baidu, and JD, the quartet known by the acronym BATJ. With their flagship social media products WeChat platform, which has 1.2 billion users worldwide, WePay payment platform has 800 million accounts, and QQ Messenger with 600 million, just to name a few. The cash-rich parent firm is listed in Hong Kong with a market capitalization of $700 billion. With Tencent's social media ecosystem, which provides colossal data and prospects, client acquisition costs can be brought to its minimum. With WeBank's robust data analytical software that assess client and operation risk and overall technological prowess, which provides high performance and security over each transaction, it gives the bank a competitive edge over others. Founded in 2014, WeBank is China's first and largest digital bank. After five years in operation, they've already reached an annual revenue of $2 billion with net income of $500 million, which put them on par with China's tier two banks. On average, the daily transaction reaches half a billion and it takes less than half a second to approve the loan. These impressive results are backed by WeBank's workforce of 2000 strong. WeBank's technology focus is unparalleled. 56% of the company's employees are IT staff. 632 patents filed by the bank, which placed them the top spot for global banking invention patent application in 2019. Six of the top 10 lists are Chinese banks. WeBank's strategic direction is clear. They are set up to serve individuals and SMEs, which main streets have turned away. Superior user experience is at the heart of WeBank app design, where a WeBank Tencent user experience joint lab was set up to discover customer expectations and behavior and optimize product process and experience in the online financial service world. Through vigorous experimentation, feedback, and fine tuning to design the most secure and comfortable customer journey during each banking transaction, WeBank app provides banking platform for wealth, which includes deposit, investment insurance, loan that covers uncollateralized financing such as personal loan, car loan, and micro-enterprise loan. In addition, consumer lending is also available. Finally, lifestyle services that include payment and transfer, store value cards, and others. WeBank's technology vision is to utilize open source, open platform, and open collaboration. Open source drive cost down and accelerate innovation. Open platform allows third-party access to financial data using open banking or API. And open collaboration foster partnership and growth of the financial system. Based on proprietary technology, WeBank's business platform is built on a secure and manageable distributed architecture with the principle of four highs and two lows, high performance, high scalability, high availability, and high standard in addition to low cost and low risk. As a technology-based company, disruptive technology is utilized to its optimum using ABCD, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing, and big data. All of this support their 200 million retail customers and 1.3 million SME clients. The large segment of the unbanked, underbanked, 
and underserved population is the main driver of the banking demand in China. According to a global survey, Chinese society has one of the highest trusts of the internet, just after Nigeria and India. In addition, China also has one of the most frequent online purchases in the world. All of these contribute to the proliferation of Chinese adoption to mobile banking and digital banks. The digital banking market is not only for Chinese banks. UBS has already expressed a strong desire to set up a digital bank in China, while the local regulator is yet to release the revised banking law. The Swiss banking giant also have planned to build a China banking platform locally and roll out to the group outside China. Although Chinese banks in general focus on the home market, many already have started setting up their branches overseas, especially in Hong Kong. When Hong Kong Monetary Authority granted the eight virtual banking licenses in the local market within the last two years, six of them were backed by the mainland Chinese companies, including Tencent, Bank of China, Xiaomi, and Financial, Zhongan, and Ping'an. The application of state-of-the-art technology combined with the highly integrated collaborative team with a focus of superior user experience seem to be the common denominator amongst successful digital banks, regardless of country of origin. One distinctive feature of WeBank is its large customer base of 200 million, which puts the local bank with both scale and home ground advantage. The future of digital banks in China is promising, but also getting more crowded with rising competitors. Digital banks also compete with incumbent banks, which are rapidly reinventing themselves. Corporate digital transformation, partnering with their fintech partners and setting up fintech spin-offs to enter the race within the financial ecosystem. There are also microfinance companies, online micro lenders and consumer finance firms, plus foreign banks soon entering the race. The competition will no doubt further intensify the race, which will only benefit customers with lower costs and greater services. As for WeBank, the deepening of cross-segment open collaboration with financial institutions, government departments and retail sector will no doubt continue with greater products and services that may go beyond its market reach of Tencent ecosystem. And WeBank already have a head start over others' competitors, at least for now. As a consumer, let's sit tight and wait for the next wow moment. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more insight of China technology, business and lifestyle on this channel.